Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Yes She Can Project. I am beyond delighted today to be joined by the gorgeous Danielle. Hi, Danielle. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for coming Sorry on. To be on. Oh, okay. <laughs> snap. <laughs> um, so, for anybody who doesn't know you, could you just give me a brief introduction um, into who you are and what you do, please? Um, so I'm Danielle Mason. I am 39 and I started off in the industry as a glamour model, um, mm-hmm. page three for the sun, went on to do reality TV and now I'm a presenter. Oh, wonderful. Um, so you just touched upon obviously your career previously as a glamour model. Um, what kind of brought you to that point? And can you tell me a bit about your journey into, into the circumstances around you getting into that industry? Yeah, so I started off doing work experience on EastEnders when I was 17. Did you? Um, then, yeah, I uh, was working um, backstage and I was interested in like the whole acting thing yeah actually no I wasn't 17 I was 20 Mm -hmm. yeah I was about 20 um but I'd already done like a few film bits before um and then I uh yeah so I had a meeting then I went out for dinner that night and I was talking to someone and they said that they were friends with uh Katie Price it was Jordan at the time Jordan's agent and they were like I can get you in page three so I was like oh okay so um, they were in the industry, introduced, it was actually my sister, but she uh, introduced me and then within a week I was doing, I was just on page three. So, oh my God, that was quick. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah, it literally happened within a week. And then from then I just was in modelling mm-hmm. and I did calendars, um, shoots for magazines, um, yeah. even the women's mags um reveal and closer and things like that um and then from there then I got some reality I got a reality tv show about modeling and a couple of other things like uh snog marry and avoid and um another one called uh filthy rich and famous not me filthy rich but um it was about like relatives related to uh, people in the industry and how opposite you are um so yeah it was the fact that my sister was Kat Slater (laughs) so yeah so they they filmed me and Elton John's brother and Simon Cowell's brother what a mix (laughs) yeah I know it was good fun and then we did like BBC breakfast and stuff together then um then (laughs) my life took a bit of a turn I met a traveller, um, a gypsy from the Romani community. Um, I started seeing him and I fell pregnant with my first child. Um, and the newspapers and stuff picked up on it. And then Big Fat Gypsy Wedding picked up on it. And we're like, can we have you on the show about how you're so different? Like me coming from a Gorgia background, him coming yeah. from a traveller background. Mm-hmm. So we did that for Channel 4. We did a, a couple of episodes and it was like 15 million viewers. It was, the show oh was God. huge at the time. Do you remember like Paddy Doherty? And, yeah, um, he's brilliant, like isn't he? <laughs> yeah, the, sh- the show was huge. So yeah. then I was on this morning doing cooking with Eamon and Ruth. And, oh, my God. Um, lo- yeah, loads of TV stuff. And then, um, and then I went on to do Gypsy Kids about my kids being half um and then I went into good housekeeping um obviously because from the traveler community I'd learned a lot of cleaning techniques because as you know they're very up on their cleaning um and then I took that into presenting and now I am working as a presenter so I've had a lot of meetings journey (laughs) Um, yeah so that's where I'm at now but you can't I can't be a glamour model at my age I mean my kids would would not like it (laughs) And I'm too old. I'm nearly 40. So oh, it's not, not old. So to move, move, move away. <laughs> how, how difficult was it for you actually to go into the traveller community? I bet it was like scary. Yeah, but he more came across into my community. Um, oh, okay. So, yeah, so we lived in a house and mm-hmm. um, 
things like that we didn't uh I mean sometimes I went and stayed on the site and stuff yeah but um yeah no it was hard because um I think they like you to marry into your own in that community and I just wasn't so yeah but then the kids come and yeah everything was fine but we went our own separate ways um a few years ago and yeah I, th I think the thing that I always loved with with that program in particular was it got such a like I love the family values like they'll stick together and I think a lot of a lot of families in like British culture like our culture I think it's very like individual whereas with mm. the traveler community it really seems like everyone is constantly there for each other and things like that and I, I, I really I really respect that I think it's really cool yeah no they are it, yeah it is until when you start and if you have an argument with them it's not cool <laughs> <laughs> Moving um, on. yeah they do stick together they stick mm -hmm. together but then they also row a lot between themselves as well so mm -hmm. it it it's weighs up one. yeah um so yeah danielle from from like a female perspective being in yeah. the modeling industry how like how difficult was that for you you know to be in an industry where it's always about the way that you look how hard was that I mean I was very young at the time and obviously now I'm very subconscious I don't know whether it's because I've had kids or whatever my your body changes and stuff yeah but when I was younger I was so confident like I just yeah I like didn't care kind of thing yeah like mm -hmm. I would go out partying and then I'd go straight to a shoot the next day like I just yeah it's just it was Had just all fun. the energy yeah it was fun and I was getting paid for it so it was I a win yeah, win really yeah it was a win win it was fun yeah so I was I was a massive fan back in the day of like America's Next Top Model and Britain's yep. Next Top Model yeah is that like a true representation of the industry and like how cutthroat it is or is it kind of just magnified it's very cutthroat it's very is cutthroat it? yeah um it is uh, unless you've got like a niche to cling on to say if you was related to someone famous or you was dating someone famous okay. then you get like you're probably more likely to get booked because um, it it ups Got the their connections brand. already. Yeah, uh, it ups their brand. So if you're kind of starting like with no connections, um, it's, it's hard, very hard because yeah. they would pick someone that was dating a footballer or something. They're more likely, I think. But then some brands yeah. don't really like that. They do just like the girl next door. Um, okay. But no, it is very cutthroat, very cutthroat. Like if you if you was to have like a bit overweight, it's just like you're too you're too big. Uh, oh. They just tell you straight, um, or you're too spotty. Um, or um, I remember one girl had stretch marks, and they were like, "Why we, we don't need a girl with stretch marks when we can have one without?" Because the competition was there was just so many girls to fill every role that they 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 could be picky I suppose um but yeah they're quite rude about it but I can't imagine that would do people's confidence very much good it doesn't but Dama modeling was more laid back but that's more commercial because when I tried moving over into commercial that's I found it very cutthroat but glamour what, modeling was so than glamour yes oh my because god because they're working with top brands they were very cutthroat actually quite nasty and snotty I can imagine actually especially mm. because because the the industry that that you were in it was all about essentially your body and how yeah. you looked so you've kind of got nothing to hide behind I bet that was really really harsh yeah but you see like nowadays if you go on Love Island it's like a head start like I think that's what they all do have... it for yeah so it's like you've got like boho pretty little thing you'll find like rather than just use ordinary models which they do anyway they tend to use for like the big uh campaigns and stuff they tend to use people from like love island that have got a big media following because it helps their brand at the end of the day i mean back in my day social media wasn't a big thing at all i don't know how it was all about the newspapers 
Yeah, I mean, now... how the hell did we manage before all of these things? Yeah, I'll well, never we did. know. <laughs> and it, it was better. I feel like it was better. But now you're you can just go and read the newspaper online, whereas yeah. every day everybody would be out in the morning getting their newspaper. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not the case anymore. You can just Google if any news you want and anything you want to find out, you can just Google it. I think I think like it kind of ties into my next question, like with with the uptake in social media and the being able to access anything at any time. Um, you had a really, really rough time over lockdown, didn't you? And you were the victim of some really, really vile, I don't know if you say trolling or trolling. Um, how how yeah. did you manage how did you manage to navigate through that at the time when essentially we couldn't escape from anything because we were in our houses? Was that, was which trolling was, I've had a couple of incidents. Are you talking about the one where a video went viral? Yes, I think it was that when I was doing my research, yeah. When you, it, oh, there, you couldn't there get was out another of one. It, There was another, oh yeah, because there was another one as well where some girl was messaging me saying, I hope your kids get cancer and stuff like <gasps> that. Um, yeah, and I had to get oh. the, um, yeah. So I had that. So I didn't wasn't sure if you talk about that one or the other one. And then yeah, I had actually a girl um had put out a video like uh viral. She had like quite a big following as well, like literally slandering my name, a load of lies. So I had to go to I don't think she understood the consequences of how much trouble you can get in from doing yeah. that, especially like putting it out there from your own account. So that's pretty really stupid really isn't it <laughs> yeah so I went to a solicitor and he basically shut her down and was like everything you've said is a lie um and yeah but yeah it was really crap really and yeah. this is what but to be honest like when you're younger not that this was younger but when I was younger yeah you don't think like I don't think kids when kids go through this with the whole social social media thing they don't think their brain doesn't uh, think like how that person is feeling um they just uh yeah they just don't it don't think whereas as you get older you realize oh my, no that would make someone feel really crap so I won't do that but um I think that's the problem with teenagers and stuff they don't actually use their brains like how that person would feel if it's on the other foot because there's been incidents where I've watched a tv show and someone's been really nasty on it this is when I was younger someone's been really nasty on it and I've had a go at them over social media saying like are you bully like blah 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 and really like you can't you can't do that anymore um it's not yeah you just I'll just I think stay people right forget away. there's a real person on the other side. Yeah, don't they? you do, you do. So, um, but then at the same time, I suppose when you're younger and you're not actually knowledgeable about what yeah. it actually does to people, you, I think people get carried away. Um, yeah. Whereas you'll find that if you end up responding to them nine times out of ten, they'll be like, "Oh my god, sorry. Oh my god, you replied back." Um, I'm sorry it's just they're not thinking that it's a real person like you said so almost almost like when they're messaging somebody if they are in the public eye and they are famous then it's almost like they're kind of they're kind of unreachable so like you say for you to text them back or message them back it's kind of like oh shit it is a real person here yeah I think it's so like put up on a pedestal isn't it and I don't think that they realize that that there's a real human behind that account yeah I mean I, I mean when I see things in the media and stuff nowadays I, I, I see like a lot of people have opinions on it I try my hardest nowadays not to have an opinion on anything because I know that things can be written differently in the press to what's actually oh like happened or it, that it sounds 30 times worse than what yeah. actually has happened so I try not to make comment on anything because you don't know what that person's going through so whereas in the past I used to be like wow what a what a twat <laughs> now <laughs> I'd think now I think no I'm not even going to comment on it because you don't actually know the full extent of what's happened and things like that so but I, th- I tend I to think say definitely and I think sometimes like say for example I'll like read something in the news I'll, I'll have followed that person on social media say if it's like oh such and such puts this on their story and claims this that and the other I think what a load of shit 
I literally watched their story yesterday where your journalist got this from. And it's totally out of context. It's unbelievable yeah. how they twist it round. But they're looking for readers. They're not looking to yeah. make friends. They're looking for <laughs> yeah. as many hits as they can get on their story. So they'll put a title for whatever yeah. they can get away with that's like the most clickbait extreme isn't it? to what's actually happened. Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. Uh, what would you say, Danielle, has been your highlights so far? It sounds like you've had so many, though. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Bit of roller coaster. Uh, I loved it when I went to Barbados and shot a calendar. Um, that was that was good because we went like business class and we was there for like five. We were only there for five days, but it was just like paradise, and it was just like wow. Oh, the um, leg room <laughs> and Portugal. Um, yeah. I shot a calendar out in Portugal, which was good. Um, that was another highlight. Um, going on this morning that was another highlight yeah I've got quite a few highlights what would you say has been your biggest challenge so far presenting like getting into presenting is really okay. hard because obviously I'm still trying to get my foot in the door um yeah. and it is just a lot of people want to do it um yeah. I wish that I had started it earlier okay. but where I was in my when I was uh obviously I was been bringing my children up mm -hmm. and I was very restricted on what I could was able to do yeah um so now it's like I'm making up for it all now <laughs> and you're starting over almost at the beginning again aren't you well yeah I've had to go back to basics and do uh more training like refresh and stuff so I'd yeah. say at the moment I'm probably um it's hard there. I have no doubt yeah. about that oh thanks <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you if you could go back to your younger self what advice would you go back and give to her to me mm. um I would have had my head screwed on a lot more but do you know <laughs> when, when I was doing my page three I didn't give a monkey like I remember I used to have like I just would have been more switched on, put it that way, a lot okay. more switched on. And I didn't care for my future at the time. Like, I was just like, just didn't care. I would just thought, oh, I, I don't know. I just I'll had spend the money now, <laughs> think about it later. <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know. I probably would have tried to have my head screwed on a lot more rather than partying all the time because I was a bit of a party girl. Yeah. So I just wish that I had the head on my shoulders I've got now back then. Yeah. But I suppose when you're when you're young, you want to go out partying. So and you're learning. At all least the I've time, got it all out you? my system. <laughs> yeah. And I know a lot of people that are in my boat that are doing their career, some of them haven't got kids yet. And I know that they worry. And I think, well, at least I've got my children and you know, they're at 10 now. I've I've had them. I don't have to worry about um wanting to have children because I've got them now so that's one plus side <laughs> definitely um so what's coming next for you so I'm just doing my good housekeeping so I took my cleaning to tv um I had a meeting actually I can set to, I did have a meeting with channel four was it channel four channel five for um a cleaning show like they're looking for like a Kim and Aggie style thing Wow. So I had a couple of meetings for that, but I think they've cast that now. Um, oh. So I've just got to keep building up and building yeah. up and building up until um, I've got, you know, a lot of Dream content role. and things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, hopefully you'll see me on QVC or Ideal World too. Yeah, that as well. Cool. Okay. So is that like the dream? Is that the dream role for you? Um, I would like to be doing good housekeeping stuff on a regular basis weekly and that's okay. what QVC and Ideal World would be um, even though they're I suppose they're at loggerheads but to, to go with one of them would be nice um, and then I would plug on with other things on the side other presenting work on the side um, yeah. I'm looking to present some boxing um, mm -hmm interviewing the fighters backstage that's one mm -hmm. of the things I, I would really like to do um I mean is that a passion of yours boxing yeah 
yeah i i do watch a lot of it um mm-hmm. and i used to present cage fighting um oh, wow yeah about 12 years ago um and then i went to a boxing show at the weekend which i just thought like i would like to do some sort of presenting around it yeah. so yeah there's loads of things that I'm interested in but obviously Mm -hmm. good housekeeping is like the main thing that I do uh, is my niche so Mm -hmm. to be doing cleaning products and things like that that I know a lot about would probably be the best thing for me and cleaning hacks as well you should you should contact good housekeeping magazine and see if you can get like your own column you know like tips and tricks every week or something yeah I did yeah that's a good idea actually I will contact them yeah definitely yeah, do that oh danielle it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you yeah and... thank you for having me oh thank you let, for coming on let me know if you hear back from tina and I i'll let you know to. if i hear back from tina yeah definitely